Yeah, David uh, said to us back in 2003, would you go out and check a few hilltop sites in Sycamore Canyon? We've been there seven years and over 300 sites. Okay. Uh, this is a, we're going to discuss the uh, full coverage survey of the Sycamore Canyon. Where is Sycamore Canyon? If you, it's about 50 miles south of Flagstaff, and you see the, on the map it says Camp Verde. We're about 15 miles to the east of Camp Verde. This is a, just a, a Google map of the Sycamore Canyon. You can see the, the deep the elevation change from the river, the Verde River as it goes along here, is 3,000 feet to the top, what you call Mud Tanks Mesa. This is the area that we've covered so far in yellow. And we not only covered um, Sycamore Canyon, but we've gone from Black Mountain Canyon all the way over to Boulder Canyon and from Mud Tanks Mesa down to the river. This area here is uh, near Brown Springs. This is just some pictures of the upper Sycamore Canyon. It's almost like Alpine country up there. This is the middle Verde, or the middle part of the uh, Sycamore Canyon. This is uh, the junction of uh, Sycamore Canyon and 708. Uh, basically, we started at this, this is our first area right here. We parked here, when, but when you start walking up there, you look at these big hills above you, and you try to figure out which way to go, and it's brand new territory, no maps, anything, so you, so that was quite of a challenge, and we did it uh, this is the lower uh, Sycamore Canyon. It gets much rockier, not as much uh, fertile soil. So the population in this area dropped radically from uh, in the prehistoric times. Uh, this is the confluence of the uh, Sycamore Canyon and the Verde River. There is a uh, large um, two-story Pueblo right here, which uh, was been recorded many, many years ago. The original survey objectives were to, um, to uh, check out these hilltop pueblos that were spotted by Joe. And the task was to record the hilltop sites and note their position in the line of sight studies. Recording involved making a sketch and analyzing the ceramics of each site. This is the type of ceramics that we find. Um, and, J and Jim will talk about that. So this is one of the largest sites we found in Sycamore Canyon. It wasn't spotted by aerial photography or aircraft. And uh, it's approximately 400 meters long by 100 meters wide. Uh, in the, on the slope here is about 15 rooms. You see rooms going up to here. But what's amazing about this site, it had a, had a wall going all the way across the, the mesa top. There's also another wall here. It looks like they were starting another one down here. And that's David standing on top of the remains of the wall. This is the other half of the site. Um, and it also had remnants of a wall right here. It appears that they um, disassembled that wall and, put it, and built the one further down. So all we had here were cobbles from the fill from the wall. Um, you can see here some rooms along here. There's a nice room block there. A lot of gardens, terrace gardens in this area. This whole area here was cleared, rock free, very good soil. Um, up in this area we found a lithic scatter, which is some here, but our best find was a argillite nose plug that we found around this room right here. So they had some important people up there to have a nose plug. So. Anyway, this is another uh, small site downstream of that one. Uh, I have this one because, again, they did a lot of work putting in defensive walls. There's only uh, about five rooms on top here, uh, but they put a gigantic wall right here on this end. Uh, I want to point out that they filled in these crevasses here uh, to make a room, but we've also found on some other hilltop sites, specifically the one in Gap Creek, that they filled in these uh, 
crevasses basically to prevent people from climbing up into them and into the site. So it was sort of a defensive type uh, thing too. This is a picture from a top-down view of it, and I'll point out the wall is right along here. It was, it was over two meters when we were there. I mean, still two meters, but it's broken out right here. This is a picture of the, again, the middle verde. And I just show that because of this site that sits on top of this point here. And there's sites all along. There's one, there's a big room block here, and I'll show you more. So this is an aerial view of that site. Um, you can see two rooms here, and this is basically in an area of the entrance, the easiest way to get into it. This is another view from down below. You can see the high, high walls here. You could not penetrate any of this all the way around, almost uh, total circumference. This is a top-down view of the rooms on top. There are approximately 14 rooms. Um, this site in particular had a lot of petroglyphs. We don't see too many, we don't see any petroglyphs on any of the other sites. But this particular um, structure did have um, petroglyphs on, its, on the rocks on the outside of it. This is another view from the other side. I show this because right below that hilltop, right here, there was a 20 room Pueblo on that side of that hill. It is so steep now that everything is crumbled and, fall, and rolled downhill. All we have is the, is the foundations of it. And down below, there's also this flat in this area. You can't see it too well. But what we call our ceremonial site, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then up in this area, this basin here, it was like gardens, and they had rooms in that area too. This is a picture of um, our 20-room site. It, it's flat here, but it was built like a staircase um, design, two stories. This would be the second story on the side of the hill, so it was sort of a staircase built in a staircase format. This is a picture of our, or a drawing of our ceremonial site. Um, this is a very large plaza area. This is a could possibly be a kiva, but it's a very big room. It's eight meters by four, uh, 12 meters, let's see, 10 meters, which is almost uh, 30 feet long. Um, another unique thing is that this, uh, this surface here was not flat. They had actually built it up to make it flat. And along the edges, there's a built up, um, I don't know what you call it, but uh, rocks and things. So they built up this platform to make this room. Now this is the, uh, on the other side of it, it was, you, you'll see these um, room structures here, but what's unique about it is these, they're like gardens, they're almost terraced gardens. And, um, and this, this one up on top, it's sort of a sideways step. You go this and then you step up to the next platform. And this one's sort of coming down the hill, you have one up on, above it and then one down below. And then this is a single one right here. What I think they were trying to do, if these are gardens, we haven't proven that, because, uh, but what I think they were doing is allowing the rainwater to come downhill into those gardens, sort of like watering you. This is another, this is a picture on, of, uh, of a Pueblo site, the furthest down uh, Sycamore Canyon. Uh, we never really established line of sight with this particular one. Uh, it just sits sort of alone about, about two miles from the other ones. Uh, it has approximately nine rooms to it, but they're very large rooms. And they, uh, you can't see it from this drawing, but it's like built in a staircase again. This is one level, another level, another, and then on up here. Um, we're looking out towards uh, Mindelof Cavets and the Verde River. Um, again, I can't prove that we had line of sight with Mindelof because uh, there's no room on, above Mindelof that has line of sight with this one. So we're still looking. Uh, you'll notice the, high, uh, the thick walls. 
of that site, and uh, that's Justine standing out there. Now, examples of line of sight, again, our objective was when we find a site, is to identify who its neighbor is that you can see. So you have this continuity of sight. We try to establish that uh, with each um, uh, Pueblo or uh, hilltop site that had maybe. So we're, we're standing, I'm standing on a hill here. This is the, the last site I showed you right here. He has line of sight with this one, and of course that one, and then there's one across behind. This is 13 mile uh, rock, and there's, there's a two room uh, site right behind it, which has line of sight, and then that can see down to Black River, to Black Mountain uh, Canyon, I'm sorry. This is sort of a schematic of what we call our line of sight. Uh, and if we give it miles, like from Black Mountain Canyon, and we have a fort jawbone to 13 mile rock, to all the other sites, and then all the way down to Brown Springs, over to Salome, which is on the Fossil Creek. And that distance would be approximately 20 miles. These are some examples of our uh, room sites that we do find. The one on the left is a, what we call a carport. Actually, we don't call it, some archeologists called it that. <laughs> um, but uh, we got, you know, once in a while you see the, two, the, the one on the left, but then we started defining these rooms on the right and they had this strange appendage, you know, coming out like this and you figured maybe a wall fell down or something, there must be another foundation in there. But we kept finding this particular design, it could be straight out or it could be L-shaped. What we think they are is, is basically windbreaks you have the basic room, which would be a full height room. This wall is only about a meter high. So we had, uh, they had probably a windbreak for cooking outside, living outside in the summer. And the direction of the wind is usually from the southwest in Sycamore Canyon. And they were positioned such that they would be wind blocks. There's two sketches of one is a two room site um, and they have doors, doorways. We don't find too, very many um, rooms with doorways. Um, this is a different design. This is a, a, a cord fill. It has two outer walls with, with a fill on the inside. Again, this is a low walled structure. So uh, it would probably be built with um, poles in, those, in that core and then some kind of matting on the outside. So it would be probably a, a summer type uh, dwelling also. Okay, agricultural sites, because this area is, um, it was basically a large farming area with the small sites being, uh, you're gonna give me time. Okay, we're okay, five minutes? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I'll give you some examples. I'll run through this quickly. As you notice, uh, the Pueblos were mostly on the south side of the canyon, and these are little, small, one or two room sites. And this area is very good soil. The slope goes to the west, so drainage for water can water their fields. This is an example of a, of a terrace in a wash. You can see, see this sections here where Jim stands. This is a uh, waffle guard. They're approximately five meters by three meters each. And we think that they had uh, some kind of water control device to the water, but we, you know, you can't excavate, so you don't know exactly. Example of water, of irrigation off a hill on a to a platform is this site right here. And then they also used washes to water these uh, waffle gardens too. So they, they'll hook up to a wash and then get water to water their gardens. This is the neat one I like is because they had reservoirs too. In this particular one, they built the berm across the wash. This is a dirt berm. And then they used the ditch along this hillside 
This, this area here is very poor soil, so they would catch, capture water in there, lead it into a tank, and then it had an overflow device on it that if the tank would get too full, it wouldn't break the dam, but it would overflow in this direction. That's uh, RJ in, in the ditch right there. And this is the ditch going down. You can see the berm right here, and then the, the, uh, the drainage goes that way. So we also had Apache and Yavapai sites, and that's a Apache site there. That's a stone axe we found there. It was broken in half, but we put it back together for the picture. It's a beautiful matati. It's only about um, 10, 10 centimeters wide and about 20 centimeters, or maybe 30 centimeters long. But that's the only matati that we found, a whole matati we found in the whole uh, survey. And still intact. It was stuck between two bit large rocks. So we were lucky to find that one. There's a dam, a check dam and a wash for water. They also um, used catchments on springs. So they built a little catchment basin for water. And then I'll just go with petroglyphs. Most of the petroglyphs that we have were on, on the upper end of the canyon. And then there's a few on the, on the south end or on the west end of it. It's just some pictures of petroglyphs, some unusual ones. And then uh, to wrap it up, we, this is our numbers that we have. We have almost 300 sites. We've spent 9, over 9,000 hours doing this. Uh, one thing we do have that's neat is racetracks. We have three racetracks. And the racetracks are basically an open area or, or designated area where we think they were race at or run. Running was a sacred thing to the Indians. So, uh, uh, Sycamore Canyon sites, the southern Sanagan Hanaki phase culture, largest Hanaki phase culture in, in the Verde Valley. Trade artifacts found where it came from Little Colorado, Tucson, Seki Canyon, Chavez Pass, and so forth. And we got uh, lithics from Perkinsville and the black. Uh, uh, I forgot what it's called now. <laughs> uh, not a, basalt, and then obsidian from Flagstaff. Did, it, did I make it in time? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>